Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Wilson, and recently I've been going through and making a series where I teach all of the plugins in Logic, and today's plugin is the Delay Designer. This is one of the more complicated plugins in Logic, so I'm excited to dive in and show you what it can do. If that all sounds good, please make sure you like and subscribe because it helps to support the channel and helps other people to find the content. Let's get started. Logic Delay Designer. Go down to add a plugin, scroll all the way down to Logic, or it might be in your list there. Logic, delay, delay designer, and we'll do mono to stereo. This is the most complicated delay. Um, you can do crazy stuff with it. So when you open it up, you're gonna have this big window here. And this is the main area you're gonna focus. And this basically shows in a linear format when delays or echoes are gonna happen. This plugin refers to them as taps. So this is tap A right here. And you can click to add more taps. And so now we have tap B and C. You can click to drag the taps around. So now we have A, B, C. Um, you can also highlight to delete a tap um, or just click a tap and delete it like that. And this is set up in a linear format. So basically your sound is gonna start over on the left and you can see it's in four, four at zero milliseconds and then move across all the way to the right. And when it hits a tap, it's going to make an echo equivalent to that taps settings. Um, again, super confusing. If you just need basic delays, this is not, not it. Um, but if you need to do some weird, cool stuff, you're in the right place. Um, so we have three taps now. You have a little thing up here that lets you drag and show a whole timeline of delays. So like you can have stuff up to a thousand, ten, wow, 10,000 milliseconds away. Um, if you just want to wait like five minutes for your echo to happen. So there's all these boxes up at the top. And these are parameters for each tap. Um, and you can control them all at the same time. So this first one is cutoff. So there's a high and low pass on each repeat. And you can adjust it according to how you want. So if I hit play right now, I have an acoustic strum. Super exciting stuff. And then now when I do it, you're going to hear three repeats. It sounded like four, but it's the original and three repeats. For the cutoff, say we want it to kind of roll off highs as it goes. You just drag them, grab them and drag them down here. And now as the repeats continue, it's gonna kind of roll off the top end. You could do the same thing on the low end and start to get thinner as you go up. Cool. You can also increase the resonance of those filters. can also transpose those filters. So let's go up a semitone and then up an octave. <laughs> if you want something weird, um, you can turn off any parameter by clicking this little dot up top. So now it's just gonna turn off the pitch of those repeats. And then pan, you can change where it pans to. So we'll start on the left, go to the middle and then go to the right. Cool. And then you can set the level of those repeats back on the initial screen. So I'll just make them quieter as it goes. Cool. So that's an overview of what you can do in the main window. Auto zoom is going to automatically fill the space. So if you go away over here, put a bunch more taps and then click auto zoom, it's going to zoom you out so you can see your entire delay chain. Over on the left, we have a sync section. This is similar to like region snapping together or quantization where it, it snaps it to, syncs it to the grid. And an example of this is if you just click and drag around, let me get rid of these. Uh, if you just click and drag these around, they're gonna snap to certain ratios, certain spots on the timeline. If you turn it off, you can free move them just based on milliseconds. And then swing, if you want to add any swing to your groove, let's do 78%. That's kind of cool if you're into that. Um, I'm going to clear out all the taps for this next part. Um, these two buttons right here are a little weird, um, situational, but if you want to tap out your own pattern, that's what these two buttons are for. So to do that, you're going to hit start. And when you hit start, that text will change to tap, and then it's gonna start a playhead within the delay window here. And whenever you click the tap button, it's gonna add a delay head. So you can think of some weird random pattern, and then when you're done, 
you can hit last tap and that'll be your last one, your finish. Um, so I'm going to show you right now. Okay, bunch of random ones, last tap. Okay, and now I'm going to play it, let you hear it. Last tap, okay. That's really weird. But it's there if you want it. I could probably see this as a really good sound design tool if you just need some very specific echo to happen. Um, again, it's a delay designer. It's not like a really easy to use user friendly delay. Not that it's not user friendly, but learn, like know what the tool is for. And this is not, if you just need a quick like dot at eighth, there's better ones than this. Moving on down here to the bottom, this is where you can dial in all the parameters for one tap at a time. So if you say we want tap B, so then tap B lit up here, you can go along and dial in all the parameters. So you can turn on the filter. You can do this right here, you know, adjust that. You can do the slope of the filter. Uh, you could do the resonance of the filter. You could do the pitch, pitch that one down. Um, you can flip it or pan it or whatever you want. You can change the pan there. I don't know what flip does. Let's figure out what flip does. Right now it's left. I flip it. Puts it on the right. Okay. Flip puts it on the other side. I should have guessed that. Um, back here. Oh, I guess we don't get that. Okay. Go back to tap A. So flip just is your, it inverts your stereo. And then you can mute it here. You can also set the level. So over here on the right, there's this feedback button and it behaves a little oddly due to the nature of this plugin. So when you turn it on, you're going to get a little bar right here and you can't touch it, but you can come over here and select a tap. And this is going to basically choose what the feedback is applied to. So on a regular delay plugin, you have like, you know, number of repeats or feedback, or there's a few different names for it. Um, and this, the feedback amount is right here. And this says which taps it's going to be applied to in a linear order. So if you set A, it's only going to happen to A. If you set B, it's going to happen to A and B. Same thing if you set C, it's going to happen to all of them. I don't know why they have it that way, but it's a linear way saying, hey, these from the beginning until this point are going to feedback, are going to continue to echo. Here is tap A on the echo. Here's both the taps. Starts going between them. Here's all three of the taps. And then this last little section here is for wet and dry. This is pretty common on a lot of reverb plugins. Here's the dry all the way up, no wet. Here's the wet all the way up with no dry. That's what that does. So you can blend in, you know, the original versus the effect. Uh, a couple cool things you can do with this. Uh, again, if you highlight everything, you can delete it all. Um, turn off auto zoom. If you drag this whole thing, you can move around with your view. If you drag just the edge, you can zoom in and out. If you hold command when you're in this screen, it's going to give you a pencil tool and you can actually draw in curves. So if I do something like that, something like that, I can curve up some resonance, make it transpose down as we go, pan from right to left, turn up and then down. All of that you could do super quickly with the pencil. So here's what all that sounds like. That's, that's wild. Like I did that in like three seconds. My recommendation if you're going to use this plugin is go into the presets and you can get as simple or as complicated as you want. So if you want simple filtered, you could do a uh, dotted filter pan. And this is going to be like dotted eighths that are filtered and then pan back and forth. You could see the filter goes down there. Then that'll just get you to a starting point quicker than like programming all that in yourself. But they've also got some super here. Let's go warped jungle delay. That sounds fun. Let's hear that on guitar. I've got my little Adele short here. Mm -hmm. 
That's uh That's something. That makes me feel some way. <laughs> Single ring mod. That's pretty cool. Uh swirling fifths. So a lot of these presets will get you into some cool realm closer than programming at all yourself, but whatever you want, this is a super powerful, super in-depth tool that'll let you do many things within Logic. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments. I'll be happy to elaborate or dig into this plugin more. Until next time, thanks so much for watching and make sure you like and subscribe. Bye.